Covering Jacksonville Beach, dogged determination leads to some progress at a puppy park. After about a month of trouble, security is restored following a crusade by a couple of the people who use Paws Park near the police station. Kent spoke with Parks and Recreation and the dog owners. We've been coming here religiously for over a year, but the conditions are getting progressively worse. Just more than a week ago, we met Phoebe and Billy, both trying to enjoy the park with their owners. Paws Park has a big dog area and a smaller dog area. Users pay a fee and register their animals in Jack's Beach, which is appreciated by Gail Morse. We pay $50 a year and you have to make sure when you go in that your dogs have all of their tags and shots, which is a really good thing because you don't want your dog in with dogs that are sick or, you know, need shots or whatever. So we're real happy about that. Morse was not so happy when, at the end of February, the gate to the small dogs area stopped locking. We know all the dogs, the dogs know each other, and they all play together. But new dogs, especially a dog that would come through here that wasn't registered, it's kind of dangerous. So she called Parks and Recreation for Jack's Beach and says that she didn't get anywhere until today. I spoke with Jason Fatidis over the phone. The director told me that he spoke with Gail Morse, and then he got a mechanic to the gate right away. Fatidis says someone had jammed a toothpick into the lock, and it was stuck open. So at this point, gate fixed. That means it's easier to get out than it is to get in because the lock is repaired. What hasn't been addressed yet, and I'm told it will be, is the maintenance of the grounds. That's a painful problem for dogs like Billy. After about five minutes, you're gonna see he's a white dog and he's covered, he looks like he has spots on him. Morse pointed out patches of weeds which turn into sand spurs when they dry out. Billy picked up dozens in just a few minutes he played at the park Monday. Fatidis at Parks and Recreation told me over the phone he is now aware of that problem and he has scheduled maintenance to take care of it. I think they've dropped the ball. They're probably doing the best they can, but I would love for them to do a little bit better job. To recreation, as she said, it couldn't have been nicer when she finally got in touch with him. However, she says that she'd been trying to establish contact with him for weeks. She also believes persistence made the difference and always does when you're trying to have a problem like this resolved. Mr. Fatidis told me that he did not have a record of Gail Morse calling repeatedly over the past few weeks, but he said he did act on her complaints as soon as he heard from her about them today. Mary?